Welcome back to Saturday Sports Show on AM 940 WMIX, as well as online at WMIXSports.com. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Danny Zawinski in studio. Jeff Crow on the buttons. Chris Hugo and Mike Richardson away on assignment next week. The Saturday Sports Show will emanate from Peoria. Class 1A and 2A Boys Basketball State Tournament will be going there. We'll have the show up at Peoria. What we're doing, where we're doing it from, and all that will be figured out this week. But you just leave your dial here, a computer setting right here for <clears throat> the Saturday Sports Show. Last night, the Mount Vernon Rams played for a regional championship last night and came up a bit short. Coach Gamber, I'm not going to ask you how you are. I'm going right straight into earlier in the week. Let's start out with the Massac County game earlier in the week on Wednesday. Your team came out and won 63-39. Probably one of your better games of the year with the way you came out and really handled Massac early and often in that one. Yeah, I know that was the big key to, to Wednesday was, was getting off to that good start and um, really really building from there. I thought, I thought Jake played a really strong game Wednesday night and just you know, everything seemed to be clicking and uh, I thought our defense was was as good as it had been this year. It, just, it, was, a, it was a really solid performance from our guys on, on both ends of the floor and um, you know, I think Massac's a very good team. They, they won 20 games, and our kids really played well Wednesday night. It played well, and I think one of those interesting points that you bring up, first off, is Massac County won 20 games this year. They play in the Ohio Division. Yet they got in against Mount Vernon, who's a 3A school, obviously played bigger schools all year. Off the, off topic, off of your team, a question of, is this a point where these schools that are now getting bumped up from 2A to 3A that are going to see South 7 teams, do you think they have to radically change their schedule in order, order to be able to compete in the postseason now? I don't know. I mean, that's that's a really good question. And, you know, for what you hate for, for a team like Massac is they were notified of their being bumped up so late that you, it was too late to change their schedule immediately, and um, I mean that's that's a really tough deal for the for the teams that are right there on the line because um, you know their enrollments are a lot closer to the teams they're playing than ours. But when you get in the regional, if you're going to have to play up, it's it's a tough situation, and um, I'm sure Coach Hoffman. Sure, that's something that he thinks about quite a bit. What's the best uh, best way to, to handle that? And I'd sure love to see him back in the pyramid. I loved having them in the pyramid. I thought that was a good team for that tournament because of how good a coach Coach Hoffman is and how hard his kids play. And, you know, maybe in the future that'll be something that maybe they can get back in that Thanksgiving tournament and help that tournament out. Back to the Massac County game specifically. Jake Pike, as you mentioned, had a big week in his two regional games. Had 20 against Massac. Shikari Hawkins continued his good play off the bench. But a lot of balance from your team on Wednesday night. It seemed like a complete team effort as far as scoring goes, where your guys got out to such a good start and it kind of just blossomed as the game went on scoring-wise. Yeah, I think um, you know we, we were able to hit quite a few perimeter shots early. And they really had to extend their defense. And when they have to extend their defense and when they can't help as much off shooters, we were able to get to start getting to the rim then. So it was a, a really nice recipe for victory. Hit perimeter shots early, extend the defense, and then be able to get to the rim. And, um, you know, I think last night, I think that's what we never got in that game was we never – could hit any perimeter shots to make them guard us, and they could just stay so packed into their defense that when we tried to attack the rim, there's two, three guys there um, because they're they're forcing us to hit perimeter shots. And unfortunately, we didn't hit any last night. I think we hit one perimeter shot in the entire game, and um, that was when they went zone and Braden hit that three there in the second quarter. But besides that, you know. It made it difficult to score in the second half when you can't hit a perimeter shot and they, they just pack it in and go one for 19 from the field. And, and It's not like we weren't trying to score. It's, things things became really difficult for us. I, I liked last night. Obviously, you're playing on the road. You can say what you want. Everybody can say it's a regional final. You're on the road at Carbondale. 
a lot of energy from the Terriers, fans and players early. Your team seemed to really come out, jump on that early, and had that big lead in the first half. I thought really did a good job for some young guys being out there in a situ- first time in a situation, a regional final, really to come out and neutralize Carbonell's momentum early to get that lead head- in the halftime. And that's, um, <clears throat> that's probably what is most surprising about last night to me with our struggles in the second half is that, you know, my my big worry was, you, know, you look at the Effingham game from a week ago, you look at the Carbondale game specifically from a week ago, um, we got off to such bad starts that we were playing catch-up. You know, last night we got off to as good a start as we could hope for. Um, our defense was really solid in the first half. We scored several points there in the first quarter. And we looked Looked like everything was clicking. The tempo, I thought all week that was the key to us being able to win, was right where we wanted it. Um, and then I thought another big thing was um, when Michael and Braden were on the bench with foul trouble, I thought our kids did a really nice job of finishing out that first half. And, and, and we were up six at the half with those two guys being out a little bit. I really liked where we were where we were, and even after a really poor third quarter on our part, at the end of the third quarter, I still loved the position we were in. And you know, we talked at, at in between third and fourth quarter, um, we were right where we wanted to be. We were in a tie game with Carbondale at Carbondale. We just had a really poor offensive quarter. And I really felt like there in the fourth quarter we'd come out, settle back in, and then get the job done. But unfortunately, couldn't score when we got around the rim, didn't hit any shots, and, and you know, eventually, um, I, as good as our, our, I thought our defense was at times, you, you can't really score five points and a half. Pretty tough to hold the other team to that or less. So it's just, a, a kind of a nightmare on the offensive end for that second half. I, I thought maybe the the thing was the game was backwards. Now I mean backwards by usually a road team will come out very passive early, get down early, and fight their way back. It's kind of like the first half was like, or the second half would be like a first half with your team coming right. out passive, and then the second half was the you know the first half was the aggressor. Really a different kind of setup last night as far as the game was played. I, I agree. It was. I'm feeling still just until uh, until about the two minute mark, minute and a half mark. I still thought we were in a great spot um, with as far as a chance to win. It's just uh, and, you know, I couldn't sleep last night. You know, I watched watched some of that film and uh, I felt like, especially early in the second half, and then again midway through the fourth quarter. I thought we got the ball in really good spots around the basket. I mean, our first four or five trips in the second half, we got the ball to the rim. Um, we missed every one of them, and then we got fouled and missed both free throws. And so I thought I thought our kids got the ball in good spots. They just were unable to finish, and then I, I, think, um, I think we pressed a little bit there. I mean, when we were having the struggles. But we forced some shots that that we probably shouldn't have taken. But um, I guess you'd rather your kid err on on the attacking side rather than than them being passive. And, you know, 19 shots is quite a few shots for a half. You just gotta be able to make a few more of them. And unfortunately, this time of year, it ends a season. Only two teams in 3A will ha- end on a winning note: the first place and third place team. Your seniors played their final game as Mount Vernon Rams last night. Talk about your seniors. Yeah, and that's when when the end of the year comes. That, that's a really tough. Um, you know, what do you say in the locker room after the game? Because of, you've got emotions, but you also and, and, and even still today, it's going to be hard. But as time goes by, and that's that's what you really hate is is those guys put in a lot of time and a lot of work, and, and you know now their seasons. First, their their high school season's done, and, and that's that's tough. I mean, we we these, these guys won a lot of games for us, and um, in their varsity career. I mean, we had some of them 
for us as sophomores. We, we won 22 games as our sophomore year. A lot of them were big contributors last year. We won 22 games. And this year, I mean, didn't have the year that, that I think a lot of us hope, but we still won 15 games. And, and so they, they've had a very successful high school career. You know, it's, it's just I hate this part because as a coach, you start thinking of all the things you can do to try to start making sure you're a little better next year and, and all that. Then you start thinking about, man, we're not going to have this kid. We're not going to have this kid. And, and you start missing that. Our of course, you know, wrap up the season. All off season will start coming sooner than you know it. But well, our last question for you this basketball season, of course, our WMI Sports social media question of the week. And the Pope stepped down this week, retired. So we're asking everybody, what sport would you like to be the commissioner or the leader of? Um, I guess, I guess, like the MLB. Even though I'm not a, I'm not a baseball guy. It's probably my favorite sport to watch. And probably, probably that. I don't, I don't want to be in charge of anything because those guys can't do anything right. <laughs> no matter what they do, there's so many people that have something against it. Hey, we appreciate you coming on every Saturday with us this year in this basketball season, win or lose. You come on, you talk about everything. We appreciate it very much, and I'm sure we'll have you on in the future, maybe talking about something else, and, of course, next basketball season as usual. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys, for everything you've done for us this season. We really appreciate it, and and pass the word. The banquet's Thursday night. If any of you guys can come, it's going to be at 6.30. It's going to be actually in in the gym this year, so... Hopefully you guys can make it. All right. Appreciate the invitation. I'll get it passed around. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's Scott Gamble, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams. Finished their season last night 15-13. and 13. Lost in the regional final to Carbonell. And the basketball banquet will be this Thursday night at 6.30 at Mount Vernon High School. Shagnon Gymnasium. We need to take a break. When we come back on the other side, a state champion joins us. The newest one in the area, Wayne Hari of the National Hornets, will join us here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. You'll notice right away that Second Chance Auto doesn't depend on fancy sales gimmicks. Instead, you'll only find honest deals with no credit checks and instant approval. Take your income tax rebate and use it on the great quality used vehicle you really want. Cars, trucks, minivans, along with small, midsize, and full-size SUVs. Most priced under $10,000 with 3-month or 3,000-mile warranty. Family-owned for over 32 years. Serving the families in our region. Located on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Call 244-4582. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois welcomes Dr. Beth Conrardi to their medical staff. Dr. Conrardi specializes in comprehensive pain management using a multidisciplinary team approach by working with other specialists for optimal diagnosis and treatment of pain. Dr. Conrardi will treat most conditions of the spine, including management of cancer pain. Dr. Beth Conrardi, helping to make life better day after day at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois in Mount Vernon. Call 618-242-3778. I'm Kevin Snyder with a look at your next rad weather. We'll see a couple of flurries in the morning, otherwise a breezy and cold day today. Clouds will be breaking for some sun, high of 35. Some patchy clouds tonight, cold with a low 18, then a chilly day tomorrow. It will be partly sunny with a high 40, an afternoon shower Monday, high 49. Next rad weather from WMIX Mount Vernon, Illinois. Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals. More than a hospital, it's what health care should be. Danny Zerwinski in studio for the next hour and a half, the rest of the show here. And joining us now, the newest state champion in the area, Wayne Hari, the head coach of the Nashville Hornets, joins us. And, Coach, i got to ask, it's been a week, almost a full week tonight. We'll mark that full week, Mark. Has it set in yet what you and your team accomplished last Saturday yet? Well, I don't know if it has or not. You know, you just... You're living on cloud nine all the time. I tell you, I tell you what you really need to need about it, man. Is that you know you you go you know I went to the game last night and watched the boys play in the, in the sectional final and uh, uh, you know you get to meet the people in Southern Illinois and and they you know offer their congratulations to you and and things like that and you know and 
I think they're, you know, it really, it, it, it hits you pretty hard, you know. They, it, it's just a neat thing, and, you know, they, they appreciate bringing that state trophy to the South when you battle those Northern teams, and you know how it is always, you mm-hmm. know, you always feel like the South gets started sometimes and, and some things uh, as we go along here. But uh, people, I think, uh, really appreciate what you do, and when people come up there, congratulate you, and, and I, you know, we just had, we've had a great, Situation where people have done that to our players and, and to our assistant coaches and to me, and uh, it's really a neat feeling. I think that's 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 the cool thing about it to go around and, and, uh, and everybody says it's, you know you've done a great job and really appreciate what you do and and bringing a, bring a state title to the south. So, in other words, you've had to use a couple of sharpies this week, sign autographs. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, it hasn't quite gone that far. Maybe just a, sh- a handshake or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, when you get to that point and you beat T-Town in the Super, I mean, T-Town's no slouch, and you turn around, you got to play from what was Southern Illinois, like you said. Everybody bonds together. You play the team from the big city in Chicago, and you get out and you just dominate them. I mean, any getting ready for that, getting into the game, after the game, do you ever sit there and think, wow, were we really supposed to beat this team by over 20 in a state semifinal? Does that ever cross your mind? Yeah, I'm, no, not really. I mean, because we, you know, we we went up there and we knew that, you know, we were, we were going to have to play, you know, probably more than likely have to play, play teams from the north. And, um, you know, and that, to beat teams from, you know, from the big city of Chicago and, and, and then Champaign and, and, and things like that, uh, and to be to do it in you know pretty convincing fast fashion is really you know we just you don't expect that especially the you know the other times we've gone up there and you know and we just had ran into some bad luck up there mm-hmm. but uh, to do it in the, in that fashion and, and the girls just seemed like they were just so focused I know I know talked to you Saturday and you know and like I said nobody gave as much of a chance on that Saturday but like you know you know hopefully you can just, you know, have a chance to win at the end. And, to uh, play a championship game like that, and the girls just bust their tails off, and you could tell they, were, you know, they were they were focused, ready to go, but yet that you know that yet that they were they were loose and they were they weren't uptight, they weren't nervous, and it, it's a special group. It was a special group. There's no question. A definite special group, and, and a program that keeps going. And to me, if you get the state and get a trophy, to me, I mean, my goodness, well, I mean, there were schools that would pay to have one of those trophies, no matter what sport in their trophy case that haven't ever been. I don't consider it, no matter how many times you get there, if you don't win it, I don't consider it such a big, oh my gosh, blah blah blah, whatever. Was it a relief, or did that even come into your mind as winning this state title after the times being there? Just kind of, hey, we finally done it. Now I, have, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Well, I, I'm like you. I, you know, I we've been up there. You know, we've got we've made it to the state. You know, we've got quite a few trophies, and I never really considered it because you know sometimes you know people and the other coaches in the area. If you're a head coach, how hard it is just to try to get up there and uh, get a spot in the final four. Yes, it's, man, it's a, it's a tough deal, and uh, you know I I didn't really consider that, but you know a lot of people were on that on that trek. So, you know, hey. It's, you know, you finally get it, you know, and that's okay. I mean, that's that's just part of it. But you know, after after it was over, it, it, it did. I mean, it it did feel that way because you know people had asked about it and making sure that you know it's got to feel pretty good. And there's no question it did. But other than that, it, it never really. You know, you're disappointed that you didn't win, but at the same time, I knew we played pretty good up there. So it really, those kind of things, you know, it doesn't really, it didn't really bother me. You get through the Chicago school. And then you turn around the other evil, I guess, and I'm I'm, I'm stressing evil is not that bad, but a private school you're going to meet in the final that kind of gets the blood boiling here for me and other things as far as private schools go. And, I mean, they're loaded, they're talked about, almost given a state trophy, actually state championship trophy for being played. And is that was that incentive enough? I mean, I know playing for state title is one thing, but just to kind of in the back of the girls' minds, hey, we can't, we want to beat this private school, show them, hey, in Southern Illinois, we got some good basketball too. Yeah, I mean. You know that it came up. You know, it, on our on our Saturday morning, you know, we you know we walked through and went over scout report. You know, we just hey, you know, you know these Southern Illinois schools, they know how to play. We know how to play. Let's make sure that uh, we show them. And uh, uh, and the girls wanted to do that. They wanted to make sure. Hey, you know, 
these guys ain't giving us any chances. The reporters aren't giving us any chances up here. I, I know uh, the paper up there, we were supposed to lose the first game of Walter Lutheran and uh, things like that. So uh, I think they, you know, they had a chip on their shoulders and they wanted to make sure that, you know, that we could play. And, and you know, you get back to the privacy or the, the, uh, the uh, private school situation. And we went, we went up there last last two years, you know, we battled Quincy Notre Dame, and, man, we just battled them, battled them, battled them. It's, 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 there's no question it's tough, you know, and but that's just the way the IHSA is, and, and you, know, it, you know, they're going to put them in those classes, and that's the way it is, and, and you just have to adjust, and you have to try to do the best you can. And sometimes you fail, and sometimes you succeed, and, uh, you know, the other two years, we, you know, we battled Quincy, you know, we just battled and battled and battled, we couldn't get the job done, and this year we go up there and we beat two, so maybe you know maybe the odds were in our favor this year. Yeah, a team that wins this Nashville native for you, coaching the alma mater, coming back to Nashville last Sunday for the Pep Rally at the Assembly Hall. Was it everything you thought it would be, or was it just more than what you could think of? I, I tell you what, you know, you know, I remember, you know, I was way back when, you know, when Coach Bogle in '78, our mm-hmm. boys won it, won it all in '78, and, and you know, I was, I was a little guy standing on the on the street. Walk, you know, when the bus came through, and uh, you know, they, we had the uh, uh, coming home rally when we went into the, to the gym. Um, you know, it, it's hard to imagine. He, you know, he, he, I remember just some of the things that he said, or even coming back from the from the arena to the hotel we were staying. The fans there were just unbelievable, and I remember Coach Bolton saying at the, at the uh, reception when he was talking, he said. He just was overwhelmed when he walked in that hotel. How the fans embraced us and our team. And it was just he just couldn't he couldn't put in words. And that's the way I felt. I mean, and then we came home and to have the to have those all those fans up and down the streets like that. I know the parents and the, and the kids were just overwhelmed by it, and it's hard to hard to put in words. And like I said, I you know Coach Bogle went to the high school here, and I did too, and. You know, you grow up, you know almost everybody in Nashville. That's just mm-hmm. the way it is when you grow up here, and and then you come back, and or you leave, go to Southern, and you come back. But you're always a Southern Illinois guy, and you're always a Nashville guy. So you just you just know people, and you're related, related to a lot of people. It's a neat thing, and uh, when that happens, it's it's hard to describe, and it's you know it, you know you see older people coming up to you that you know, that you knew that since you were five or six years old, and giving you hugs and things like that. Um, it's hard to describe that. It's a really neat feeling. And you said to the girls, hey, thanks for everything. Now put your helmets on and go win the softball state title again. Was that the end of the speech? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got practice here, uh, coming up here at 9 o'clock, so I'm about ready to head to the gym here. So Coach Woody, he's, uh, he's getting things fired up. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you, know, you can't miss a step because you go from winning one thing to try to defend the other. You know, you got to do what you got to do over there. Yeah, I guess so. That's what they say. So, you know, everybody expects us to do pretty well, so... Uh, yeah, there's high expectations on that softball side. So, uh, you know, he helped me a lot. So, uh, you know, I'm going to try to help him a lot. So that's, that's the way we, we kind of do it here. Hey, we got, you know, what's always going to be is we got one final question for you. And that's that W Mike Sports social media question of the week. And, I, you know, this week's question is, of course, the Pope retired from leading the church. So now our question this week is, now we're not going to ask you to be Pope or anything, but what sport would you like to be the commissioner or the leader of? Any sports? You know, um, good question. I, well, I tell you what, I, I really would like to be. You know, I, I, for some reason, that 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 soccer on the other side of the world is interesting to me. I, you know, you never know what you get into. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a right. soccer guy. I'm not. A, I, I'm not a big soccer fan. But I mean, I bet they do some. They get into some situations and some skirmishes. And I would like to see, you know, some of the fans and the coaches and the players and just kind of deal with that and see what they come, you know, if you have a meeting with them. I bet they have some interesting conversations, and I think you'd have some pretty good laughs with that. I, I bet you got some land that you would love to make some soccer fields out of. Come up with the Hari League, the Hari Soccer League, the HSL or something. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Golly, I got some, yeah, we've got an open field that we can throw out there and let them go. Uh, hey, we will, we cannot say here at WMX Sports for Mr. Hugo and myself and others around Southern Illinois. Congratulations. Thank you very much for bringing that state title back to Southern Illinois. And enjoy that sweet nectar of victory, tasting that consistently all the time. And enjoy every success and every pat on the back you get over the next few months. 
Well, thanks for supporting us, and you know, I, it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys. It's always a lot of fun, and uh, uh, you know, like I said, it's been a great year, and uh, uh, yeah, we're going to surely, you know, we get, you know, I've got a lot of cards that said, make sure you favor the moment, and, and uh, we're sure going to do that. That's good. Thank you, Coach, for joining us, and get out there and win that softball title too. Where you at? I guess. We'll give it a shot. Okay. Wayne Hari, the head coach of the National Hornets basketball team, state champs in 2013. They're back on the softball field. they got a state title to defend as well in Class 2A. We need to take a break. On the other side, Mike McManus talks basketball, boys and girls, in high school level here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. Hi, this is Monica Wilt, Relationship Banker with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. People's National Bank is a true community bank that specializes in offering a wide variety of products to suit a wide variety of people. We offer free checking, interest checking, certificates of deposits, home loans, business loans, online banking, mobile banking, and much more. Stop by any of our People's National Bank locations or visit us online at peoplesnationalbank.com for more information. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. State Farm, this is Jessica. Hey, Jessica, Jerry Newman. Does State Farm offer more discounts to more drivers? Yep, like the good driver discount. So it's for good, but not great drivers. No, Jerry. There's also the multi-line discount. For calling from multiple lines while driving. You should never use a phone while driving. I only make calls from my car when I'm stuck in a ditch or something. Are you in a ditch? Yes, I am. State Farm offers more discounts to more drivers than any other insurance company. Get to a better state. One more reason to call State Farm agent Tony Wilton Mount Vernon at 242-1421. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be as we roll into the last part of the first hour. Denny Zerwinski here at the studios on Broadway here in Mount Vernon, Illinois. If you're listening to us on the World Wide Web at WMIXports.com, that's where we're emanating from. Got a little help in the office. Thank you very much, Elisa, for helping me out and faxing something to our friends to the south. Sports today. What are we talking about? Hey, let's do a scoreboard update. We haven't done one of those in a while. We'll start off with Class 1A sectional finals. Lanark Eastland beat Aquin 49-31. They will play the winner of Newark and Deerfield tonight. On Tuesday, actually, but they will play the winner of that game. Mount Sterling, it was sectional. as Payson Seymour beating Menden Unity 50-43. Payson Seymour will play Madison, who beat Jabot last night 51-49. That's at the Jacksonville Super. Altamont, it was Nokomis over Oblong 68-46. Gallatin County over Meridian 75-58. So Gallatin County will play Nokomis Tuesday night 6 p.m. at the arena. Danville Schlarman sectional. Cisna Park beat Arthur Lovington 46-31. And Illini Central beat Colfax 72-64. Illini Central was la- at Peoria last year. Got beat by Carrollton in the opening round. Cisna Park will play Illini Central ISU. In Class 2A at the Byron sectional, old favorite Winnebago's back. They beat Newman Central. Catholic 74-52. And at Farmington, Monmouth beat Monarch Fieldcrest 39-38. So Winnebago play Monmouth. Seton Academy beat Tilden, 73-67. That's not Tilden, Illinois. That's Chicago Tilden. Providence St. Mel beat North Shore, 57-45. So Seton Academy will play Providence St. Mel in the Battle of the Private Schools out of Chicago. Seton Academy's won a title before. Remember them going to Peoria. And at Frankfurt, it was Harrisburg over Nashville, 52-26. And T-Town beat Bree Central in double overtime, 58-53. Defending champs in 2A out. As Harrisburg and T-Town will battle at 8 p.m. Tuesday night. At Carbondale, Beardstown, Riverton beat Warsaw 78-70. And at Tolono was St. Joe Ogden beating Monticello 65-38. Riverton will play St. Joe Ogden in a super sectional. Class 3A last night. These games will feed into the Mascuta sectional next week. Cahokia beat Altoff at Waterloo 77-63. Carbondale beat Mount Vernon 38-31 at Carbondale. So Cahokia and Carbondale play Tuesday night at Mascuta. Centre beat Effingham 42-39 on their home floor, and East St. Louis beat Marquette 67-40 at Bethalto. So at 
Mascouda next week. It'll be Cahokia versus Carbondale on Tuesday night and Centralia versus East St. Louis on Wednesday night. The winners will play Friday. And if you're counting it, yep, three of the four teams are from the South 7 along with East St. Louis. Got to feel pretty good if you're a South 7 fan this morning. In the other sectional, and we'll look here and see where that one, I have already exited out of that, but the other section will have Champagne send, I should say, at Mattoon. It was Taylorville over Mount Zion last night. The Tornadoes won a regional, 64-49. It will be Champagne Centennial winning their own regional over Urbana, 64-58. At Jacksonville, it was Chatham Glenwood beating SHG, 53-43. And at Bloomington, Lincoln beat Normal U High, 48-45. So Taylorville will take on Centennial, the upstart Tornadoes, out of the CS8. And Chatham Glenwood will play Lincoln. And then those winners of those two sectionals will play next, actually a week from Tuesday, at Springfield. Class 4A last night, our friends to the west. O'Fallon won their own regional, beating Collinsville 44-42, and Edwardsville beat Alton at Granite City 55-40. So O'Fallon's going to play Edwardsville on Tuesday night at Alton. They're part of that sectional that feeds in, that has to travel, so they play one game in the Metro East on a neutral floor. Class 3A girls... Yesterday in Bloomington, Vernon Hills beat Montini 48-45, and Notre Dame beat Morton 67-51. That game, Vernon Hills-Montini went overtime. In 4A, Rolling Meadows beat Huntley 61-44, and Chicago Marion beat Whitney Young 63-39. So if you're keeping track, it's Vernon Hills against Quincy Notre Dame for the title in 3A, Montini and Morton in third place. And in 4A, it's Rolling Meadows and Chicago Marion for the title in 4A and Huntley and Whitney Young for the title, or for third place, in 4A. As we look to next week, and I know people are wanting to know what's shaking and what's happening here. Got the computer up, got the exiting going on, and we're looking around. That's what ad-libbing's for. So today, as I mentioned already in 3A, 4A, that's going on this afternoon tonight at Bloomington. The girls' basketball season will wind down. In 1A, boys tonight at the Mooseheart sectional, it's Newark versus Deerfield. Newark won the title in 11 before Woodlawn did last year in 12. And we have to mention, I think, before we go any further, uh, the fact that the Woodlawn Cardinals were the state champs last year in 2012. They were beaten on Tuesday night by Oblong, a very good Oblong team, who ran into some foul trouble, some hot shooting from the Comus and whatnot last night. Probably a great scouting report, almost impeccable. And, again, a lot of people thought, hey, that sectional up there, blah, 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 everybody runs through it, nobody's any good up there. I dare anybody to go up there and tell those schools, not named Woodlawn every year, hey, you guys aren't any good, Woodlawn's just going to walk through this. And a lot of us here on the Saturday Sports Show mentioned that and said, hey, you can't take everything for granted. And Woodlawn played their guts out there on on Tuesday night, just came up a little bit short. Again, against two very good teams, a very good team against Oblong, and Nokomis tells you how good they are if they can do that. So we congratulate the Woodlawn Cardinals state, defending state champions. They are the state champions of 2012, but they were defeated on Tuesday night. Congratulations to them on a run the last four or five years they've had. Joining us now on the phone, the voice, one of the voices of Centurion Athletics on our sister station, WRXX Centurion, Mike McManus. How are you, Mr. McManus? Well, first, my apologies for running tardy this morning, but we're doing fine. Well, good. Running tardy. Let's start off last weekend. Nashville wins a state title in girls. We just had Wayne Harry on. I, I, what a moment. I mean, I, I can't even explain talking to Wayne Harry. He's still on cloud nine. You can just tell in his voice. You know, Danny, I, that, um, you want all, every team you cover and every team that you're around uh, to do well, with maybe more than any coach I've ever been around. I wanted that state title so badly for Wayne, I couldn't see straight. And uh, just so happy for him and his girls and his program. Uh, they have been a model. They're the gold standard uh, that everybody else should follow. And, you know, they win games the old-fashioned way. They get down and they dig in and they guard like there's no tomorrow. And, and uh, you know, if they score, they score. And this team was able to score a little better. Uh, than some of the teams he's had in the past, but what a uh, what a terrific win for a great guy and and uh, you know I didn't know I'd be I'd still be this excited for Wayne, but uh, still a week later it's been, it was it was a lot of fun to to be up there. You got to cover that and got 
Nashville. We'll watch them win that state title. They're second in basketball, one in 78 for the boys, one now for girls. They have two in softball now. And, uh, not much time to turn around for them because they get back Sunday from Bloomington. They got to start practice. They got a softball title to defend now in the spring. Yeah, you know that's yeah from one championship to another, huh? And with a lot of the, you know, five, I think four or five, maybe six of the girls are the are the same. So uh, uh, this, uh, you know, yeah, they're they're the team to be. And I would think. You know, that's going to be tough to do just because of how good softball in Southern Illinois uh, is on a yearly basis. It's going to be tough for them to find their way back to East Peoria, but they should be uh, dynamite on the diamond as well. Well, let's go around. Last weekend ended that, 3A, 4A. We didn't have a lot of local taste here. Let's go to 1A boys. And I've already mentioned it, and I'll mention it again. Woodlawn was the defending state champ. Oh, everybody thought, everybody thinks when Woodlawn goes to that sectional north, oh, it's easy, it's like a two-round bye, they're automatically in the super. But this year, as in previous years, that sectional is pretty good. Woodlawn gets tripped up by Oblong, Nokomis wins. They come south now. A Woodlawn team that's had a run for four years, unlike many others in the state of Illinois. Yeah, you know, you're exactly right. If, if you don't do your homework, you would assume that that would be, you know, I, I have so much respect for Coach Kimbo up at Nokomis mm-hmm. uh, and, and the work. I've known Stan for many, many years, and, and uh, the work that, that he does, and and uh, maybe there weren't a lot of people that, that thought that uh, this would happen. I know Woodlawn was a heavy favorite, but you know, Oblong had, a, 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 from all accounts, a very good athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Johnson kid, uh, you know, they, we every, I think everybody was kind of predicting Woodlawn Goreville. Well, unfortunately, they're both done, and 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 it'll go on now with Gallatin County and Nokomis. And you know, I haven't seen either. So, to, so for me to try to pick a team to win that uh, would be foolish. <laughs> I think it'll be a great game though down at the arena Tuesday night. A great game. First time Gallatin County has been in a super since '74. When they went to the, they won it in seventy three. Went to the state tournament seventy four. Got beaten in the first round, as yep. Ridgeway. That's how long it's been for them. Wow, that's uh, you know it's kind of some some teams broke through this year, and obviously they're one of them, Danny. And then you know you look at I know it didn't end well for them, but you look at Chester having not won a regional yeah. in thirty eight years. Uh, they kind of broke through a little bit this year as well. But that'll be a great game again uh, Tuesday night down in F, down in SIU and. Again, having not seen either this year, I've heard a lot about the seven footer at Gallatin County that he's a skilled kid uh, for for a seven foot, and he's not just size; he, he's a pretty skilled kid. I, I'm moving on to two a team you've seen a lot of, Bree Central, and you've seen T Town. I imagine as well. Those guys played a classic last night, double overtime. First thing that stands out to me at Bree Central. With the four classes, the teams they had to go through to just get to tee down, their road's a little bit tougher than the average bear. They, they go out last night, double overtimes, defending class 2A state champs, but no slouch at all losing to tee town last night at, at Greenville. No, then you've got to figure how hard they had to work uh, Wednesday night against Robinson and, and an all-state player in Aaron Seiler just to get through them uh, was terrific. And, you know, this team... Uh, I think at times, I don't want to speak for Ken and he deny it, but I think at times, you know, all teams frustrate their coaches at times, but I think this team kind of frustrated him because sometimes it just didn't click in game situations. Uh, the two losses in the regular season, especially uh, the second one to Carlisle uh, at home that ended their long home court winning streak, he was... Uh, you know, not upset after the game, and he did, as Stan always does, went high road and, and congratulated Carlisle on playing so well. But you can tell he just thought there was something more this team could do, and I think in the end, Danny, they did it. Uh, Jacob Timmerman's a whale of a defender and a, and a heck of a point guard, and he kind of steers their ship, and Austin Rick and some of the other guys they have. Maybe not the greatest basketball players in the world, but, boy, when they played together, uh, they were able to get some things done, and especially in the regional to have to go through modern day and Carlisle back to back. That was <laughs> that's not easy, and they were able to do it. And and uh, there was no doubt in my mind. I I know a lot of folks thought T Town would just w- roll through that. There was no doubt in my mind that Stan and his staff was going to uh, 
to put a game plan together to give them a chance to win. And it, it sounds like they missed a real golden opportunity in double overtime uh, to maybe separate themselves a little bit. Uh, instead of being up no. five as they should have been, they were only up today one in a four-point most- play. Yeah, and you look at, at that game, and modern, uh, it's modern day, i got modern day on my mind now. T-Town will play Harrisburg, who blitzed Nashville last night, blitzing everybody in the postseason. I mean, a lot of people are trying to put Harrisburg up there as one of the better teams in, cl- in four class or two class. I'm not ready to sell them yet as far as that goes, because they still have got three games to try to win, but it's pretty darn good Harrisburg team right now that's rolling through the postseason. Oh, man, Arthur. They got. I, I don't know what they don't have. I, I don't know because I, I haven't had a chance to see them this year. I don't know that they're the best team, uh, small school team, the South has ever put out. I'm. I, I kind of, you know, want to wait and see how far down the road they go. And, but I do think this: you look at some of the other things that have happened. Uh, for example, the team I really thought was going to win two A this year was Pleasant Plains. Uh-huh. They've been they've been knocked off. Yes, uh, I had a chance to see that team each of the last, you know, what two, three, four years uh, up in Jacksonville for Thanksgiving tournament. And really thought with all the pieces that, that Coach Cameron had back this year, it was their turn again. Uh, but they are obviously phenomenal, uh, Harrisburg. But I, I think if there's a team out there that could get them, it's Coach Fairbacher and T-Town. That'll that could be a good game. Uh, you're not going to just run over everybody, mm-hmm. I wouldn't think. And, and I think, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're playing now, you're playing better people. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. I know it was close last night after a quarter down there at West Frankfurt, and then everything just went wrong for Nashville, and everything went incredibly right for Harrisburg. But, again, I think that has the potential to be a good ball game, you know, Tuesday night down in Carbondale. Shifting gears to 3A. It is a three-team out of four South 7 run at Muscuda. I mean, the South 7's got to be pretty proud. The Orphans, one of them, you got to see a great game last night as the Orphans held off Effingham. Well, you know, I don't know what it's been of late with Centralia, Danny. They can't get out of the gate. They just have not gotten out of the gate at all. And, boy, last night, Effingham's a couple of threes that pop in and out, a missed layup here or there, um, really blowing that game open early. I mean, it could have easily been about 19-3 to three early. Uh, but credit Centralia for, for hanging in there. They started making some shots. Jake Wood hit a huge three uh, just in front of the buzzer in the first half, and it got, the, got Centralia back to within one. And Again, as, as many of their of – their, uh, Moms and dads even say it's not pretty what they do, but they find a way to get things done. And what won them that game last night, Dan, was about midway through the second quarter, uh, Coach Bennett uh, had really his defensive lineup on the floor uh, that includes Charlie Avishi and, and De'Aaron Owens, the little freshman point guard, and they got that game turned around by guarding like the place was on fire. I mean, they really were up in... Uh, Effingham's face hard. I mean, re- maybe as hard as they've guarded any team all year. And Ron Reed, even after the game, said there's no doubt what the difference was. Their pressure uh, hurt us a lot more than I ever thought it would. And it wasn't full court pressure. It was get them in the half court, really guard, go double the ball, and again, uh, try to do it without fouling. And then at the end, you know, you're up eight with a minute to go and you feel good about where things are going. The next thing you know, it's a one point game. And, uh, then they, Jake Wood hit a couple big free throws late and they were able to survive about a 45 footer at the gun. Uh, that boy, it looked good when the kid let go. It looked like we might be going overtime, but it just missed a wide ride and they were able to survive. And as you said, I made the comment last night, five of our six teams from our league, we're playing for regional championships. I think that makes the South Southern pretty accountable that it was a pretty good league this year. Pretty accountable it is, and we are going to make you accountable for our WMI Sports social media question of the week, our final question for you today, and it is, what sport would you like to be the commissioner or the leader of? Wow. Yeah, there's a lot out there. <laughs> well, you know, my first love is baseball, but I think baseball's in pretty good shape. I'd like to go to a sport and maybe help it a little bit. You know what? The one that's in, you know, on the surface in great shape because of the money they rake in football. 
Mm-hmm. But I think the sport's got a lot of problems, so I think I'd go there. Yeah, they've got a lot of issues right now with everything going on right now, on and off yeah. the field. Yeah, you know, and more off the field. I think the on the field product is terrific, with the exception. Uh, I'm, I'm with a lot of the, you know, I'm with a lot of the players that they've legislated the the intent of football out of football. And I understand to a point they've had to do it, uh, but I think football would probably be where I'd go. Mike, thanks for joining us. Enjoy that Orphans game next Wednesday and against East St. Louis. Wish them best of luck, and thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, it won't be easy, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, thanks, buddy. Thank you. Mike McManus, who voice of one of the voices of Centralia Athletics on WRXX. We need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. On the other side, the sports editor of the Southern Illinois newspaper, Les Winkler, join us. He covered... The Gallatin County Meridian game. And it was an exciting game both all around, both on and off the floor. We're going to have him join us on a Saturday sports show here on WMIX. Learn to live healthy, learn to live well, and learn how you can live free from unexpected medical expense with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance and the Page Agency. Health insurance that covers hospital, medical, and surgical expenses offers a wide choice of deductibles and a non-tobacco user discount, too. Rising medical costs don't have to be a problem with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance. This is coverage we hope you'll never need, but you just can't be without. Call the Page Agency at 242-7000 about a major medical health insurance plan today. Duca to Peoria, Evansville to St. Louis. This is AM 940 WMIX, Mount Vernon. The free service from Withers Broadcasting. Hi, I'm Elaine. I've been a nurse with Good Samaritan for many, many years. One of the best things about my job is knowing that I work for a hospital that cares so much about the community. We're dedicated to attracting the best physicians and investing in the most advanced medical technologies. Whether it's radiology, oncology, or advanced heart care, we provide some of the nation's most advanced treatment options right here in Southern Illinois. That way patients never have to travel far from their families to receive the care they need. I'm always happy when families come visit. And starting in 2013, that sort of thing will happen even more. That's when Good Samaritan opens our all-new regional health center. Everything about the new center has been designed with patients in mind. It features all private rooms and family-friendly areas that make it easier for visitors to stay overnight. I can't wait to see what Good Samaritan does with this exciting new facility. Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. Southern Illinois now has a better home for sports. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Jam-packed with local scores, video highlights, and archives of every local sports broadcast on WMIX. Did your team win? Miss that game-winning shot last night? Didn't catch your favorite coach on the Saturday sports show? WMIXSports.com is right at your fingertips. On your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, or your video game console. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Another free service from Winners Broadcasting. Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals. More than a hospital, it's what health care should be. Denny Zerwinski here with Jeff Crow pushing the buttons. Chris Hugo and Mike Richardson on assignment. Joining us now, the sports editor of the Southern Illinois and Les Winkler joins us. He had the opportunity to cover the Meridian Gallatin County sectional championship last night. Les, that game was exciting in more ways than one last night, wasn't it? That was a good basketball game. It, uh, I, really, uh, I really thought... Uh, Gallatin County would have to play a, a great game to, to win, and then they rose to the occasion. Uh, I had some real questions about whether they could handle uh, Meridian's press, but they, they did that very well, and uh, it, and I think that was a, that was the key to the victory. Before we get into Gallatin County and the, and the stories around them, this Meridian team, in five years of Class 1, a regional final, sectional semifinal, sectional final, two supers, and now a sectional final. Uh, they are one or two wins away from really being a dynasty in the in far as five, four class basketball is concerned, but they seem to can't get over themselves with stuff going on between technicals and whatnot in games. Yeah, you know, it was it was a strange strange kind of game last night. I I told uh, one of the other media members uh, last night when the game was over. I don't remember ever typing in a box score in which I I put four technicals in the box. Um, on the, and on the other hand, two of the technicals were for um, for pulling the jersey out of your mm-hmm. uh, out of their pants. And I mean, okay, that, that's a little bit that's a little bit of a discipline issue. But I mean, it's not it's not horrible behavior in terms of you know 
you know what I'm saying? Just it, it wasn't it wasn't just a, a, a terrible outburst or anything like that. But uh, yeah, the uh, Jeff Mandrell was really really disappointed after the game. I spoke to him. And he said they thought they had maybe one or two technicals all year long, and um, you could tell they were frustrated. Uh, Gallatin County did a good job with their interior defense. Uh, between Patrick Lowe and uh, Andrew Drone, I don't know how many shots were blocked. So uh, the, the technicals, uh, well, the, the first technical sort, sort of started the downward spiral, and, and the rest you could just kind of tell was just frustration boiling over. And, and you look at this game and at, at Blue Reading box score that I'm looking at now in the Southern Illinois, and I get it every day, by the way. That's a little promo for you. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, you know, Gallatin County's up 24-22 at the half, and... And those technicals and those five out of six free throws get him that six point eight point lead now at the end of three and as you mentioned kind of took Meridian out of the game. It's Gallatin County's one of these schools. They play in the GEC. The running joke is they don't see anybody but GEC schools. They've got wins now over Meridian and they've got you know they played Harrisburg a couple times in Nashville, but it's kind of an unknown entity because we really don't know what Gallatin County can do away from the GEC. Yeah, I, I agree, and uh, I, I think uh, um, I think the big key for uh, Gallatin County down the stretch is uh, Patrick Lowe. Uh, okay. Andrew Drone, if, if people haven't seen him play in the last year, he has made remarkable strides. He, his, uh, his lateral movement has improved. Uh, he uh, actually gets out on the floor and plays defense, where last year they used to like to hide him in his zone. But uh, the big guy is going to get his points. He is, he is slick around the basket. You get him the ball down low, he's going to put it in the hoop. But uh, Patrick Lowe is a six-six forward who's got all the tools. He can run, he can jump, he can shoot. But uh, he has been through his career. He's been fairly passive offensively. But the last in, in the sectional, he really stepped forward, and he really creates a matchup problems. When you know, in Class A, when you're expected to uh, stop a six-eleven guy and then guard then guard a very mobile six six guy mm-hmm. that's going to create some problems for people and Gallatin is a tall team i mean that's a lot you know, like you said everybody hears and reads and sees highlights of Luke Drone but this Gallatin County team's definitely more than him they just don't sit back and watch drone go to work no and uh, you know uh, a guy from Gallatin County uh stopped by the press box at a Swoopy game the other day and said do you realize that the Gallatin County lineup is uh, how much taller than SAU starting line? Yeah, <laughs> and, he had, and he had a point because you got you got six four West McGuire in there, and, and uh, Dane Hish is about six. Uh, they're both their guards are about six foot six one. So yeah, they're taller than the Salukis. So this Gallatin County team, and I, I could be wrong. I did some looking around this morning. To my knowledge, based on the schools that feed in with Junction and Ridgeway, of course Ridgeway, seventy three state champs. First time Gallatin County's been to a super, obviously under that name, but as far as the feeder schools that make up that school district now, since 74 when Ridgeway was there, when they made it to the Elite Eight? Yes. I I double-checked with some people last night, and, yeah, this is the first. uh, uh, Actually, um, the win over um, uh, Steelville was the first sectional victory for the school. Right. In in boys' basketball, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing to me because, I mean, they, they won it in 73. They got back to Champaign in 74, I think lost in Elite Eight, and now they got this opportunity to go to SIU to play. And now I asked this question because a year ago you were dealing with things down there like Ridgeway was, Harrisburg was, with that awful tornado that rolled through. A year later, Harrisburg and Gallatin County are going to be at Carbondale Tuesday night. Is it kind of poetic justice and just a lift after all the rebuilding and its bonding and everything that's happened down in that part of the world after that devastating tornado, that these two teams now are still playing next Tuesday night at SIU? You no, know, I never thought about that. Maybe it is karma, you know. And you know, and the, and the thing is, both communities have been looking. <laughs> both communities have been looking for two, forward to Tuesday night for two or three years. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, I mean, uh, this, this Galveston County bunch, Drone and Lowe, have been fixtures in the lineup for a couple of years. Years, and of course, Harrisburg with. Uh, with Henshaw and uh, Smith Peters, and that bunch has been looking forward to this year too. So, you know, it's uh, it's been a long road, and uh, I, I never looked at the karma angle before. But you know, you are the man. Hey, did, yeah, if you write that article this week about it, just to remember a little bit, okay? <laughs> All right. Hey, and, and on the other side, you've also seen Harrisburg. i got to get your thoughts, too. This Harrisburg team's been rolling through teams. I mean, they've shelled Benton, they've shelled Chester, they've shelled Nashville in postseason amongst others. I mean, I, I, with a lot of basketball left, three games, T-Town, and then uh, if they get that far to the state tournament, is this, 
obviously they're one of the better 1A schools as far as two class goes would be, or one of the better 2A schools as far as four class goes. Uh, where's this team rank at right now heading into a super? Oh boy, you know they're, they're pretty close to the top. They've got uh, they've got so many weapons. They're very long. They're very athletic. Um, I mean, it's not a huge team, um, but but they're not huge, but they're big. <laughs> they're six six and about six four next three positions. So uh, and and they're very long and very skilled. And I think it's, I think the skill level is, is maybe what set, what sets them apart. Mm-hmm. Because uh, when, when you look at when you look at the uh, when you look at the stuff that Henshaw and Smith Peters can do, and then uh, Eli and Tabor and Scott, and then their bench is so good. And you, uh, uh, I talked to another coach who shall remain nameless mm-hmm. the other the other night, and his comment was that the best two teams in uh, Southern Illinois are Harrisburg starters and Harrisburg bench. <laughs> That's not bad. Here's the thing, too. The Miss or the Ohio Division at 09 cents Massac up the state. They get second beat by a private school. Murphy goes in 11, gets beat by a private school. Harrisburg's going again and laying in the in the in the shadows. A lot of things got to happen. Is Seton Academy, Providence, St. Mel the winner of that game gets to Peoria? Are we setting it up and angling again? Maybe uh, those two, that that kind of matchup again, where the Ohio Division from the River River sends her best team, and we have a private school from Chicago waiting on them. I don't know. That's just kind of one of my pet peeves. And yeah, you're baiting me. You know all that. I know. I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm uh, saying this is that. I, I, th- yeah. I think. And I, you know, in all in all honesty, I'm a graduate of Breed's Modern Day. I'm a pro- product of the private school. Right. I I just think people just put a little bit too much emphasis on that. All right. Let's throw emphasis on this. Speaking of Breeze. Breeze Central state champs, defending state champs, get knocked off by T Town double overtime last night. T Town comes in. I know you've seen Bree Central. I'm not. You know, T Town's not bad. I mean, this is this sets up for a pretty decent little matchup Tuesday night with T Town and Harrisburg. Going to be a lot of interested basketball fans there. Well, you know, I, I talked to uh, during the Bree Martyr tournament. I talked to uh, Central Coach Dan Eagleton one one night at Blaine, and uh, it was it was kind of curious because he said that he thought the two teams that provided the best uh, would provide the best test for Harrisburg would be T Town and Robinson. And as it turned out, Central had to face both of them in the in the uh, postseason. So Stan uh, is a good guy; he knows his way around. So I think I haven't seen I haven't seen T Town play, but uh, uh, you know, obviously to get that far, you're a pretty good basketball team. But they're going to have to play very well to uh, to beat Harrisburg. I think. Uh, you look at that and talking about Bree Central, product of the four class system, is sometimes teams get in areas geography based. It is what it is. Bree Central had to go through Modern Day, Carlisle, and then had to go through their sectional to get to where they at. I mean, that's a stiff batch of competition for Bree Central to get through. Robinson as well, state champs two, three years ago, to get to the sectional final. It's like, my gosh, I'm surprised that Central had enough gas to even go into double overtime last night. That's what it's supposed to be. I, I, I love that. You know, I, I was thinking that uh, I just got back from walking my dog this morning. I was just thinking about how competitive that Hardin County re- uh, sectional was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what it should be. I mean, you know, let's face it. Some of the, uh, the Friday night of regional championships this year was just god-awful. I mean, most yeah. of the most of the uh, margins of victory were by 15, 15, 15 points of a close game. And, I mean, these sectional games have been hard-fought and fun. And that's what basketball is all about. Yeah, they, they they should have to work hard to get there. Speaking of working hard to get there, at the Mascuta sectional, three of the four teams in the Mascuta sectional are South Seven schools. Uh, at the beginning of the year, middle of the year, I didn't see that. Everything played out. Three out of four teams in the sectional at Mascuta. That's pretty good for the South Seven in this current setup of four class basketball. Yeah, you know, I, the the uh, Cardinal Regional kind of surprised me a little bit. I I seen Massac County play. A couple times this year, I, I really thought that uh, uh, Massac was right to take to walk away with that, but uh, that certainly, certainly didn't happen. So, uh, Cardinal's awfully young. It, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how they uh, how they handle the postseason. I've seen them play several times this year. It's uh, it's an interesting group to watch. Hey, you, you mentioned that. I asked um, Scott Gamber earlier in the show. Massac twenty win team out of the Ohio Division rolls into three A their first year. And Mount Vernon handles them pretty good. A Mount Vernon team that's a couple games over 500. Is are we getting to a point where these schools, for me, from the Ohio division, the schools that go from 2A to 3A around here, are going to have to radically change their schedule a little bit, especially non-conference games, to play teams like a Marion, Mount Vernon, Carbondale, just to get ready, get used to that once postseason gets here. 
Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't really think so. I, I think a good team is a good team. I, I you know, that two A, three A, especially with the size of three A schools we around, we have around here, it's just kind of a nebulous line. It's, um, I mean, look at the, uh, look at the uh, Massac County girls. I mean, they, right. they, they, they actually got further because they were, in, they probably got further because they were in two uh, A or done three A this year. Uh, then you know, so. I don't know. You know, I've got a good basketball team. Is a good basketball team. I mean, you you think that uh, you think that Harrisburg couldn't compete with uh, with uh, the South Seven boys oh, team this yeah. year? I think they could. Oh, I've, yeah. I've seen uh, I've seen most of the South Seven teams. Hey, last question for you, and I know even walking your dog this morning, you couldn't have thought of how to answer this one. This is our <laughs> it's our WMI Sports social media question of the week, and this question is: What sport would you like to be the commissioner or the leader of? Huh. Yeah, ultimate, huh. all kinds of options for they, you. They all need my help. I know. They need our help. We <laughs> could fix a lot of things, you and I. <laughs> oh, gosh. Are we talking college? We pro can talk college, pro, high school, junior high, twiddly winks, whatever you want to do. All right. I'll, I'll take college basketball. Oh, my. What would you fix about college basketball? I'm curious. Huh? All right. So what would well, you I, do? What would you do up there? I would take all those media time out of time. Yes. I, 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 you know, I, I, and I'm being partially facetious and partially. I, I just, I just hate what that does to the flow of the game. Right. And I mean, it's, it's taken so much, it's taken so much uh, uh, strategy out of the coach's hands because if things are going south, you look at the clock, and it's, uh, you know, and it's uh, there's four thirty, four thirty left on the clock where you don't have to worry about calling a timeout because uh, next time the ball goes out of bounds, you know, it's going to be a, a stoppage in play anyway. I just. I just don't like what that's done to the game. Hey, we, Les, we appreciate you joining us. We know you've had a busy, busy week. I enjoy reading your articles in the Southern, and keep up the good work, and I'm sure I'll see you either Carbondale Tuesday or sometime down the road as well. I will be in Carbondale Tuesday night. I'm looking forward to both games. Yes, well, I am too. Les, thanks for joining us this morning. Have a good day, buddy. All right, thank you. Les Winkler, sports editor of the Southern Illinois. Great read there on for sports people. A lot of information there, a wealth of knowledge. Les Winkler, a sports editor of Southern Illinois. We need to take a break. We'll come back with another colleague of ours. It's Jeffrey Drake, the voice of Harrisburg Athletics on WBQ. He'll join us after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. Too expensive to get back into shape? Not anymore. Ren Lake College's new fitness center is only $53 per semester. They've also thought of everything with universal machines, free weights, treadmills with dedicated TV screens, ellipticals, and more. Qualified dance instructors are also available. Or go at your own pace with DVDs that can be used in the exercise room. Best of all, it's open seven days a week. Check out the Ren Lake College Fitness Center in the marketplace off Potomac Boulevard in Mount Vernon. Or log on to renlakecollege.edu slash Fit Center. The medicine shop wants to become your pharmacy of choice. It's so easy to transfer your prescription. All it takes is a phone call from you. And the medicine shop will take care of the rest. They accept Medco, TRICARE, Express Scripts, and many 90-day plans as well. Plus, you'll find their pharmacy staff so helpful. No long wait times. No hassles getting in and out of their pharmacy. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner, Eric Black. In almost every case, if a person has PPO or HMO insurance where they pay a copay at the cash register, that copay will be identical wherever you go. And even if your card says Humana or Walmart or uh, Walgreens, chances are you can use that prescription card in Anywhere. Just to be sure, give us a call and, and we can tell you over the phone if that's the case with your specific plan. Don't forget to ask the medicine shop about delivery service to your home or workplace. Convenience and friendliness, all for the same cost. Only at the medicine shop, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. I'm Kevin Snyder with a look at your next rad weather. We'll see a couple of flurries in the morning, otherwise a breezy and cold day today. Clouds will be breaking for some sun, high of 35. Some patchy clouds tonight, cold with a low 18, then a chilly day tomorrow. It will be partly sunny with a high 40, an afternoon shower Monday, high 49. Next Rad Weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Back 
Crossroads Community Hospital is more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Danny Zerwinski, Jeff Crow, wrong side. Mike Richardson, Chris Hugo, way on assignment. Next week, the Saturday Sports Show emanates from Peoria. Who and where and what we'll have on and where we'll be from, we'll let you know next weekend, but just keep it here on AM 940. WMIX on our online at WMIXsports.com. Joining me now, the voice of Harrisburg Athletics on WEBQ in Harrisburg, Illinois, Mr. Jeffrey Drake. Join us. Jeffrey, I know you're in a happy mood today. You get to cover cover another super sectional of the Harrisburg Bulldogs. Yeah, it was an impressive performance they had last night at Frankfurt Gang, winning 52-26 over Nashville. And Harrisburg trying to go a little bit further than they did last year. They lost to Reese Central, the eventual state champion, the super sectional last year, so they got to the Elite Eight. They're back this year, and for a moment, I think Harrisburg thought they'd be playing Breeze again, but uh, he kind of was able to get that double overtime one at the Green Road sectional, so the wooden shoes and the Bulldogs on Tuesday night, and what should be an interesting matchup. i, I got to ask this. I just had Les Winkler on, and we were talking about Harrisburg in general, is, and you've done Harrisburg athletics now for about 150 years. We talked about Harrisburg, this current edition of Bulldogs, how good this team is in the annals of 1A basketball with two classes or 2A basketball four classes. Is this team starting to get themselves in position to be in the argument as one of the better teams to come out of Southern Illinois? I think, I mean, they're 30 and 1 right now. And this senior class over the last four years has won 108 teams and lost 22 heading into Tuesday night. So they certainly put up a lot of wins. And I remember when this group was in fifth grade, the Cable Henshaws and the Tyler Smith Peters and at the lower levels before they reached junior high, a couple of their losses were to Benton. And uh, those were some of their only losses, and Ryan Roper was on those Benton teams. Of course, mm-hmm. he's been at Harrisburg for all four of uh, his high school years. So I think they're, they're a very good team, and they're still going to have to beat a lot of good teams if they want to win three games and win a two-A state championship. But the uh, thing about it, I mean, it's kind of a hard measuring stick. Their only loss was a Dyer County, Tennessee, to a, a program down there that's won about 30 games each of the last six years. It's hard to get a measuring stick on Harrisburg because they haven't been really tested a whole lot. I know basketball's probably a little bit down in Southern Illinois, but uh, the games they've uh, needed to win, the statement games, they beat Alton Marquette earlier in the year at SIU. They beat Callaway County down to Marshall County, who best led going into that fourth quarter in the Dyer County game. And then to, to be the national program that's so rich in basketball tradition, a national team that won 24 games heading into last night to just really shutting them down offensively, and they held the freshman, the big kid, the Royce Newman, to just four points, and Nashville only made something like nine field goals the whole game. So I think this team, something that gets overlooked is their defense, and it might have to be the defense that gives them a chance to win a state championship. Speaking of, you know, the thing here is, this Harrisburg team gets here. You also have done a number of games for Gallatin County. Um, Gallatin County is a quiet 1A school that plays a lot of GEC teams. Uh, well, how good is Gallatin County in 1A, for those that haven't seen them in our listening area? Yeah, you said there are a few Gallatin County games. I don't think Great R. Patton and the Hawks probably like it when I do it because they lost three games this year, and I've done all three of those broadcasts. So Uh-oh. They lost twice to Harrisburg, and all the other losses were to Nashville. So their only three losses have been the two A teams that reached the uh, Sweet 16, Harrisburg and Nashville, but I saw Gallatin beat Gorgel by a point over at SIU. And, you know, kudos to the Hawks for getting the, the Meridian Monkey off their back as they were able to beat the Bobcats who eliminated them the last two sectionals. So they were able to, to knock off Jeff Mandrell's team, who's always very good in Class 1A. So Gallatin County, they have a 6'11 center, and Andrew Droney is going to right down in Houston. And Patrick Lowe, I think, really goes under the radar. They're a senior laden team. They've been starting since they're freshmen and sophomores. So Gallatin's lost three games. I don't know a ton about Nicomas. I would think they got to be pretty good if they beat Oblong as handily as they did him and Oblong able to get by Woodlawn in the sectional semifinals. But Gallatin's never been to a super sectional. Of course, when it was Ridgeway before they consolidated County White, Ridgeway won the state championship back in 1972 under Hall of Famer Bob Dallas. But Gallatin County team has reached the Elite Eight, and I think it may be gravy. But, you know, they, they've got expectations, too. They know it's going to maybe be their year as well. and. The AP poll kind of reflected that. Gallatin has been in the top ten. I think they got as high as maybe three the second half of the season, if that really means anything. I'll ask you the same question I asked Les Winkler. Uh, a year ago, right now, you dealt with it, your hometown. Ridgeway dealt with it, that devastating tornado that rolled through. And now, a year later, these two teams are playing for the right to go to Peoria to be in the state, already in the state tournament playing a super, but the right to go into the final four. 
as far as everything's gone on the past year in that area, trying to rebuild and reload from that tornado, devastating tornado, is it kind of karma that these two teams are playing right now together at the same super and looking to go to the state tournament? It is kind of strange how, how it's worked out. You know, my wife, Danny, she's from Ridgeway, and they, they had a bunch of storm damage there in Gallatin County, too, and the one-year anniversary was yesterday with that leaf day tornado, and they had quite a few ceremonies yesterday throughout southeastern Illinois and continuing through the weekend, but... Uh, you know, I just remember last year at the sectional having to postpone it at El Dorado and seeing Governor Quinn down there on a Saturday in Harrisburg having a CBS sports crew following the team and then Gallatin County last year in the same position to just go through all that basketball providing a little bit of an escape from for people who lost their homes and a lot of people lost their lives in the deal. And it is kind of strange how it's worked out with both Gallatin County in 1A and a super sectional and Harrisburg in 2A and a super sectional and there's a lot of crossover. I know Harrisburg assistant coach Brandon Henshaw. He's got a lot of friends at, the, at Gallatin County. He taught at Gallatin County uh, quite a few years back, and you know it's just going to be interesting and, and really neat to see the Hawks over there at six o'clock on Tuesday and the Bulldogs at eight o'clock. And you know it will make a lot of people in southeastern Illinois happy if both could uh, go up to Peoria next weekend. And you will get to do both games, right? Yes, yeah, so we'll, I think the station's planning on doing both uh, on WEBQ. I think it's on FM 2.3. I know it'll be online at WEBQRadio.com. And we're going to follow Gallatin and Harrisburg as far as they'll go. And you know, hopefully this time uh, next week we'll be preparing for a couple of state championship games. But I know there's still a long way to go between then and now. Harrisburg's got a very good T-Town team. They're going to have to be. They haven't played T-Town this year. I know the Wooden Shoes beat Harrisburg last year in the Rich Aaron shootout down in Benton. And, well, Harrisburg and Pete Town have really locked up in some, some big games over the years. The 2010 baseball state championship team when Harrisburg was projected to walk through a solely at Pete Town and Derek Thompson, the, the lefty who is Johnny Logan now, is a big time baseball prospect. Shut down Harrisburg in the championship game. The game last year in the, the Rich Heron shootout, Harrisburg and, and Pete Town have played a lot in baseball deep in the postseason and Allison County playing on the Comas team. I'm looking forward to Tuesday night, that's for sure. Speaking of looking forward to, I'm looking forward to the next weekend if one or both gets there because then you can show me some restaurants in Peoria that I haven't found yet in my time up there. I know a little bit about uh, Bradley University. I was able to spend the last two years of my collegiate career there with the Braves and the sports communication program, but uh, haven't been to Peoria in about a year or so, so it'll be interesting to maybe take that trip up around four to Lebanon and get on 55 and uh-huh. head that way, and I think uh, maybe a lot of Harrisburg and maybe some Gallatin County fans are able to go up there too, hopefully it works out. That'll be great. Our final question, of course, as you know, is our WMAC Sports social media question of the week, and this week's question is, what sport would you like to be the commissioner or the leader of? Any sport, any level? Oh, I think the IHSA wouldn't be too bad, but uh, you know, they have a lot to deal with, and with the Chicago all the way down to East Southern Illinois, that wouldn't be bad to maybe have a little bit more of a, an insight on. But, uh, you know, for, for as many schools they have to deal with, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to be in that position. So I think to be a, a high school athletic association ahead, that, would be, that wouldn't be too bad. Hi, hey, Jeffrey. We thank you for joining us this morning. We'll see you Tuesday night at the Super, and hope we get to see you next weekend at Peoria, and hopefully Gallatin County and Harrisburg are both there and we're trying to win a state title as well. Thanks, Danny. You have a good weekend. I thank you. That's Jeffrey Jake, the voice of Harrisburg Athletics on WBQ. We need to take a break. Our final sectional correspondent of the weekend will join us. Bitten head basketball coach of the voice program, Ron Weinmiller, will join us here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. Do you farm or operate an agriculture-based business? Then Community First Bank is for you. Hi, I'm Steve Down, Agribusiness Lending Officer at Community First Bank. With our roots firmly planted in Jefferson County, we offer the stability, strength, and personal attention that you deserve. Community First Bank wants to be your financial partner with customized products for both your personal and farm banking needs. Stop by any of our five convenient Jefferson County locations to see how we can help your business grow. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Member FDIC, Equal Housing. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Saturday Sports.
Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals. More than a hospital is what healthcare should be. Denny Zerwinski here with Jeff Curl on the buttons. Also, Mike Richardson and Chris Hugo on assignment. Next week, the Saturday Sports Show will come to you live from Peoria, Illinois, home of the Class 1A and 2A State Boys Basketball Tournament, as we will be in Peoria, and we will have our Saturday Sports Show next weekend from Peoria. That's next weekend. Of course, our WMI Sports Social Media Question of the Week, what sport would you like to be the commissioner or leader of? We'd like for you to go to facebook.com slash WMI Sports and post that answer as well. We've had all kinds of responses already of what sport people would like to lead as well. Joining us now is the head coach of the Benton Rangers, Ron Weinmiller, who has coached against both teams in the Carbondale Super Sectional this Tuesday night. Harrisburg and T-Town go to battle out for a right to play in Peoria. He went and scouted that game and has coached against both those teams. We thought, what better guest to have on than a guy who's had to go up against him. That's Ron Weinmiller, who joins us now. Coach Weinmiller, how are you this morning? Hello, Coach Weinmiller, are you there? Yes. Hey, how's it going today? Good, how are you? I'm good. You got to see a classic last night in Greenville. Yeah, and what a great game. I mean, two, I mean, just two really, really well coached teams. I mean, guys that you could tell had their guys playing at a high level. And, you know, each team had a chance. Each guy had a chance in the regulation. And Breach Central had a chance at the, uh, at the end of the first overtime. And, uh, kind of the turning point of the game was, um, uh, I was down in T-Town. Uh, the kid from Breeze had a run out and missed a, missed a right-handed layup uh, when they were down two, and then T-Town came down and got a three-point play and pushed it to five, and that was kind of the game. you know. But, but what a great game. Both teams was kind of back and forth, and it was one of those games where you kind of felt like T-Town led the whole game, and Breeze Central took the lead with about three or four minutes to go, and you thought, man, they're going to win this thing. But uh, T-Town's kids credit, they held on, and, and were able to find a way to get it done in eight extra minutes. You have had the opportunity to coach against not only Harrisburg but T-Town this past season in basketball. Two teams in the Super on Tuesday night. Is there either one at this point a favorite? Obviously, Harrisburg probably is. But which one do you, what stands out to you for both these teams? Well, you know, the, the T-Town game is, is very, I mean, I think it's very unfair to kind of compare them to Harrisburg based on our experience simply because, the second game in two days, you know, you got two games the next day at the Pennyville tournament. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's kind of unfair to compare that T-Town team to that when, when, you know, we play Harrisburg and they have, they have, uh, you know, a week to prepare for us. It's the only game for that week. And, um, you know, but the thing about Harrisburg is they're just so, they're so explosive. I mean, they jumped on us the first few times. I, I made the comment to somebody, I think it was to my dad, I said, we just happened to be out there with them in the regional championship and on senior night. It wouldn't have mattered who they were playing. It just happened the Rangers were there because they were that good. And and really, when they're locked in uh, and guarding the way that they are, their length and their athleticism just gives you so much trouble. I, I, I never thought that a 14-point defeat at home at the beginning of January might be uh, maybe their closest game all year. So maybe that's something we can hang our hat on if they can, if they can get Tuesday night. I look at Harrisburg, and I think a lot of people are starting to talk now, and you've seen a lot of basketball like I have over the years in Southern Illinois. A lot of people are starting to put them in the echelon, the conversation, as one of the best 1A in two-class two teams or 2A in four-class basketball. It's probably one of the best teams coming through Southern Illinois. Um, where, do, where do they rank right now in your mind as you see them? Well, uh, here's the thing that I think that they just, it gets a little bit overshadowed with, with them. Uh, and I look back at that Robinson team. I know everyone talked about Myers Leonard, and they had an NBA guy. And, um, but the thing was, they had a point guard that was a Division One baseball player. I mean, Harrisburg starts two kids that are Division I athletes. It was a white or green collar, which gets dirty. But they are Division I athletes. I think that's a huge, huge compliment and goes a long way to show what kind of ath- athleticism that they have. And, you know, I'll tell you this. I'll be honest with you, we've played them three times, and I feel like the kid that gets everyone talks about Tyler and Capel and and, uh, and Eli, but I think the kid that really has stepped up and has kind of taken them to the next level is Bahari Amaya. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's a matchup nightmare when he comes in because usually he comes in for up church, and now your matchups are all screwed up because, you know, you've had your post-kid guarding up church, 
and now they bring in a 6'3 athlete that can beat you off the bounce and maybe is as good a shooter as anybody they have. In this atmosphere and audience of Harrisburg, and, and they're going, they're 30 and 1. This senior group's been talked about since they were in fourth and fifth grade. Is, is this about the time maybe the pressure starts grinding on them a little bit, knowing what they only have, what could be three games left, and how close they are to what they want to achieve? Well, you know, I think here's the thing they've been there before. Mm-hmm. They've been to this game before. They made it last year. You know, they, they took, I mean, People forget when these guys were sophomores, they took Murphy's girl, I don't know if you call it down to the wire, but it was a very, very competitive game. Uh, I had Davenport Jim, so these guys have all been in big games before, and they know how to handle it. And, and I don't think that, you know, I mean, I, I don't know their kids as well as anybody, but I think that, that they are they are the group that is built to, I mean, they played in the semifinals in football. They played in big baseball games. You know, I think there's a lot of translation to that. So I don't think that you have to worry about them getting on the big stage and, and worrying about, oh, no, we're the favorite. I, to be honest with you, I think you see a lot of teams that that are heavy favorites to be in the regional more so than you do down the road, simply for the fact that there's so much familiarity. I mean, I promise you, uh, I think I'm probably going to play them a more competitive game than what we did, but nobody knows their kids as well as what we do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, they they were just so so overwhelmed just with their athleticism that there was nothing that we could do about it. And this Harrisburg T Town matchup on Tuesday night at the arena. Hey, if you got time to stick around, we'll need to take a break and come back, then we can really get into some talking going on. How about that? All right, sounds good. All right, hang out on the break, and we're going to take one here. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We'll take a break, and we're going to get some more conversation in with Ron Mindmiller as we delve into more of high school sports and some more topics as well here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View and Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. I'm Kevin Snyder with a look at your next rad weather. We'll see a couple of flurries in the morning, otherwise a breezy and cold day today. Clouds will be breaking for some sun, high of 35. Some patchy clouds tonight, cold with a low 18, then a chilly day tomorrow. It will be partly sunny with a high 40, an afternoon shower Monday, high 49. Next Rad Weather from WMIX Mount Vernon, Illinois. Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. Denny's from Whiskey here in the studio. We're going to go right to the same phone wire. We have Ron Wine Miller on. But joining us now, surprise guest, just put this one together, is Harrisburg head coach Randy Smith Peters. Coach Smith Peters, are you on the line with us? I am. Hey, coach, it's nice to talk to you once again. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Absolutely. Good to talk to you. Hey, Rand- coach, uh, first of all, congratulations. I know you got things going on. You got to get somewhere. Quick thought or two about your team's win last night and then your team's game coming up Tuesday against T Town. Well, you know, we're very happy with the win last night. I knew it would be a, a tough matchup with a, with a very good Nashville team and both weather always has been very ready to play a more deliberate type style, um, which is a, a, a direct conflict to, to what we want to do. We knew that would be a concern. Um, a, a rather low scoring game, as you might expect when you play a Nashville type team. But I was very happy with our defense, and I've really bragged on our defense all year long. And uh, I know a lot of people that come to see us play talk about the, the threes and the, the passes and, and really the the things we do offensively, but I've always thought 
uh, our defense has been our strength all year long. And I think last night was one of the one of the premier games that really pointed that out. So we weren't able to generate 75 points like we do on most nights, but we were still still able to win uh, just because we defended well. And you get to play a T-Town team on Tuesday night, knocked off the defending state champs in double overtime. Right now, early on in the game, what do you know about Breeze Center, or should say T-Town, and what what do you think you'll, you'll need to do to come out with that win on Tuesday night? Well, you know, there's no question about the quality of the, the T-Town team. Uh, you know, a very good team last year, a team that, that has some experience on it. They have the size with a big, big guy in the middle. Uh, they're long basketball-type players. They're very skilled. Uh, very disciplined, and you know Andy will have them very ready to play. So uh, it will be a, a very tough game. There's no question about that. We will have to uh, play well on the offensive end, and, and I've already talked about the defensive end. But we'll, we'll have a lot of people to defend. They have an inside game. Uh, they have shooters on the outside. They have people that put on the floor. So they are the complete package, and um, you know, we, we will have to put a good game out there to come out on top. I, I asked this to a couple other guys, Les Winkler and Jeffrey Drake, and I'm asking you, because a year ago, a lot of stuff going on in Harrisburg. That devastating tornado came through there in Ridgeway. You know, all the stuff that went on. You had everything going on at the El Dorado sectional. A year, a year later, all the rebuilding, all the bonding, Harrisburg and Gallatin County are at it again, and they're playing Tuesday night for both of them to have a chance to go to the Super from southeastern Illinois. What does that mean to you for the town, for the kids, for those communities that those two teams are going to be playing for a chance to go to Peoria? Well, you know, it, it's really great, and uh, I mentioned this to someone earlier today. You know, a year ago at this time was a very, very tough time for Harrisburg, and there's not a person on our team, there's not a person in the town that wasn't greatly affected by that disaster. And a year later, those families come back, and they've had memorial services, and they're having memorial services. Uh, to think about uh, the losses that, that happened a year ago. Um, at that time, uh, a year ago before uh, the, the Lee Day tornado, I had written the word distraction on the board in the dressing room. And by at that time, when I wrote distractions on there, uh, what I meant to the team was the press, you know, pet meetings, uh, you know, things, things are a little more hyped up when you get into tournament time. And I had no idea that you know, in the next 48 hours, a, a tornado was going to come through, which created distractions that uh, you can't even imagine. Mm-hmm. And this group held together, uh, went through that, got the super sectional, played uh, the, the eventual state champ right down to the wire. And uh, you know, I, I think that was a great period of growth for, for this group. And I think one of our strengths this year has been the maturity, and, and that's one of the things that, uh, you know, hard times brings out a little bit of maturity. And, and one of our uh, Again, one of our strengths this year has been the maturity of being prepared, uh, of knowing what situations are, of, of handling adversity, and I think that's one of the things that's really made us better. Hey, I we're, know also you... very, but we're also very happy about Galton County being there, and I spoke earlier today too about, uh, you know, we're, we're neighbor, neighboring counties. Uh, Radar and I have been friends mm-hmm. forever. Our players uh, know each other very well and our friends, and so we're going to be there supporting the Hawks, and I think the Hawks will be there Great atmosphere, and Coach, I know you got to run. I know you're gathering film and info on T-Town, but I appreciate you joining us this morning. But one last question. We always ask our guests, our WMI Sports Social Media Question of the Week. Ron might have filled you in. I don't know. But this week's question is, if you could pick a sport to be the commissioner or leader of any level, high school, college, professional, what sport would that be? Oh, I'd have to pick basketball. I don't know anything about anything else. A lot of people say I don't think about basketball. So, <laughs> yeah, well, there, you know a lot more than a lot of a lot of us. I can tell you that right now. Don't sell yourself short like that. Hey, coach, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Good luck on Tuesday night. Where we'll be seeing you on Tuesday at the Super. All right, all right. Thank Good you. you. Thanks. That was Randy Smith Peters, special guest, courtesy of Ron Wine Miller, joining us. The coach of the Harrisburg Bulldogs who play in the Super on Tuesday. Ron, are you back on with us now? Yes. All right. Yes. Hey, here's our segment. We have no more breaks. We have 10 minutes. You and I can take and solve any problems in the world of high school athletics. What would you like to start with first? Anything on your agenda? Um, I think I think the number one thing that you got to start with is, you know, I I, uh, I look at this I look at this uh, uh, deal with this 
Deerfield Jewish team. Yeah. You know, yep. you know, how crazy is this? Uh, it, it's one of those things that, um, one of those things that as you look at, look at that, I, I think that the huge disadvantage for 2A to say, hey, your game's going to get over with the 1030 on, uh, Friday night. Now you got to come back and play for a state championship 12 hours later, yep. you know. 14 hours later, I just feel like that's a, that's a total disadvantage to those guys. And, and uh, you know, where do you draw the line? You know, what if Harrisburg had three kids that were practicing some religion that did not allow them to play on Friday night? Then, then do you push it to Sunday? I mean, you know, you, you want to respect people's religion, but at the same time you got to understand that they need to set up when they got in the tournament. Speaking of that, and speaking of the, of the situation here, uh, one topic comes to mind, and I got to ask you this: Is Massac County's a twenty win team this year? They get bumped up to three A after the fact. Their schedule's already set. They got out of the the pyramid tournament with three A teams, some three A's into the Vienna tournament. They get in from your perspective because you and Harrisburg and Murfreesboro's kind of tweening on that line between two A and three A. Massac had 20 wins and Mount Vernon handled them. And Mount Vernon is a couple games over 500. It, are you guys starting to look in the back of your mind, thinking maybe we need to change our schedule a little bit just in case this does happen and we get bumped up to 3A from the Ohio Division? Well, and, and I think that's something that part of Windhorse and I have talked about a lot. You know, how drastic do you change your schedule for maybe a year or two? And, uh, and you know, I, I know that Coach Winter has not spent a lot of time when this came out on the phone and. And he was really hoping that they stayed 2A. I was really hoping that they went 3. Uh, but, you know, I, I laughingly told Joe, I said, I, I'm going to find those 20 kids that bumped you up that got Harrisburg stuck in my regional this year. We went down there and played, and I said, I'm going to shift them to Joppa. They can take all the kids that they want. But uh, I, I don't think you want to do anything too crazy with your schedule, just for the simple fact is, what if you're only up a year? I think the fairest way to do it is, is lock you in for two years. You know, do it in even or odd numbered mm-hmm. years and say, all right, Matt, like you're going to be 3A for two years and then come back and evaluate it and say, all right, you, you're dropped, the numbers drop back down. I think that gives you a chance to play some two year contracts where they can go play a, a Carbondale for two years and then maybe pick back up a Anna Jonesboro, for instance, if they're 2A. But uh, I think to do something really, really crazy with your schedule, and let you know, and I give, I know that Coach Peters is sitting right here looking to me, but I give him a lot of credit in the fact that. He's gone to Marshall County for three or four years. Yeah. And, you know, I, I told him, I said, when I was in Kentucky, you never wanted to go to Tennessee. Uh, and he was crossing two state lines. So the fact that they played Dyer County as close as they did kind of tells you how good they are. And I know they lost to a good Marshall County team last year at Marshall. And I'm sure they got no breaks. Probably didn't. Uh, because I, I've seen that when you cross the, the state line. And, uh, and, and that prepa- but that's what prepares you to play games like they're going to play on Tuesday night. When you play like that and you've got teams that are bumped up, I think one thing that stands out for me is how late you are notified. I mean, it was May or June last year when teams are notified and they have no opportunity to change their schedule. Like Massac and Heron had to bump their game back a week just so they'd have a game that wouldn't have 10 days off between regular season and postseason. It's the lateness yeah, I think of being notified. That, that's the really unfortunate part of it, you know, is the late notification. that You find out so late that you're going to be moved up a class, and that's where it gets really, really tough. And that's where it gets really, really difficult just to do that. So when, and that's what makes it tough is just the fact you don't find out until June. The one of the big questions, and it'll get it'll get discussed again next weekend at Peoria, is four class basketball. Nobody goes. Nobody stays. One A team leaves town. Two A stays behind. Doesn't go to one A games. Is there really a solution to this, or is it just going to going to be the way it is? Is the way it's going to be here at Peoria with the four class basketball? I think the only solution that you have if you're going to stay with four-class basketball is I, I think you're going to have to do what Kentucky does and bring 16 teams to the state tournament. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, take your elite eight, take them all up there, and, and really increase some interest. Because right now, I mean, I'll be honest with you, um, Gallatin County, I hope they win. If Nokomis were to beat Gallatin County on Tuesday night, uh, I, I don't want to speak for the, the Harrisburg fans, but I know that they probably don't care about Nokomis playing playing our Eastland in the state semifinal game mm-hmm. because I, I don't, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, your buddies kind of get knocked out of it. And uh, the bad thing is, you know, if T-Town were to get Harrisburg on Tuesday, Southern Illinois loses a lot of interest in the state tournament. And that doesn't happen if you take more teams up there. Take more teams up there. We'll skip basketball. Some of the spring stuff is starting to come out. Track came out this week, assignments. I'm still befuddled by this. And I go through this. Flora Benton. 
Cahokia and East St. Louis are all in the same track sectional for boys. I don't understand that division at all. Yeah, I mean, well, the, it's the three. You know, the worst thing, when they were talking about going to splitting the classes in basketball, I remember uh, being at a family function, and, you know, Coach Corwin was still coaching then, and he said, he said, you just better hope we don't go to three classes. And I said, why? He said, it will completely kill the, the, the good programs in the, in the South because we'll be stuck with, with the Centralias and Mount Vernons and people like that. And, and I think that's what's happened to Andy and Track. You know, he got stuck in there with East St. Louis and Cahokia. And, you know, he told me, he was telling me some time, I think he said that East St. Louis won the 4x2 last year 12 seconds faster than the Benton school record. So, <laughs> you know, when you talk about start talking about those kind of numbers, you, you can never compete for anything special at the state level again in Track. It's kind of like they're trying, and I appreciate what the IHSA does. It's kind of like they're trying to correct it on the fly with three sport, three class sports, and then I think well, fo- football's the elephant in the room that's going to get changed as well eventually. Sure, and I think the deal with track is if they keep it at three, they can still run it all in one weekend. If they go to four, they can't. Right. So. I mean, and football's laying there because nobody can find games. Teams are trying to play each other twice instead of going to play other teams. Something's got to be done in football, uh, like the three sport, uh, three class sports, because football is going to start hurting because teams aren't going to be able to play games because it's based on wins. Yeah, and that's the problem. You know, at what point does Harrisburg decide that they're not going to play Marion anymore? They want to play Frankfurt again. You know, and, and I think superintendents are going to really start to push that. With, with transportation dollars being cut and, and you know, they're not going to want to travel like they have in the past to find games. So I think they're going to have to do something with that. Maybe a district type setup, which I know has already started to be discussed. Uh, but that's the one that they're really going to have to look at changing because it is just getting, you know, Carlisle, we'll drop us for next. We played them last year and next year, or this year and next year, a two year deal. Thought we were going to find another two year deal with them and they dropped us. Uh, to play Trenton, who's already in their conference, mm-hmm. you know, which means we're probably going to have to pick up. I think our options are Colonel Unity, St. Joe Ogden, Monticello, or Kentucky Key Mac. I think are our four options. Yeah. You know, all four great possibilities. Um, so I think we'll probably end up playing St. Joe, but you know, that's just a tough setup for however you get into it, and, and it just increases travel. Speaking of tough setup, we'll ask our WMI Sports social media question to you, and it's this week. What sport? And I know you know what it is already. What sport would you like to be the commissioner or the leader of? I got an idea what it might be. I think, I think I would go with with something, um, and when you have to go NASCAR, it's all individuals. You don't have to deal with a bunch of. Uh, you only dealing with forty three guys, not very many. So I'm gonna go with NASCAR. Okay. Hey, I got an idea. When we have more time, we need to have a little show, kind of like we've talked about, where we solve the world's problems, you know, basketball yeah. and sports. I want to do that this summer. I, I want, I'm making up a list of topics, and, and we'll take the whole two hours and do that. Okay. I'll mention that along. Mr. Hugo's along with it. We'll mention that. We'll let you go, because I know Coach Smith-Peters wants to talk to you about some games that he's going to have to deal with coming up. So we appreciate you joining us, and we'll definitely do that summer show where we start talking about all kinds of things. That's right. And, and, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, Randy was my JV coach at McLeansboro, and, and he's a guy that, that has always, you know, he's always helped me out, and he called and asked if I mind going to scout. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that you're flattered that somebody that's in your own conference and thinks enough that he, he, would, he would put you uh, in that situation that, that he trusts your opinion enough, and Wade and I were certainly happy to do that for him last night, and and just uh, really, really hope the Bulldogs can represent the River to River. I mean, think about this. If they win in the last five years, three different schools from the River to River will have gone to state and got right. a trophy. Right, right. That, that speaks volumes for, for what kind of league we have and, and the depth of our league. Hey, is that why he's got all that gray hair? Because he coached you in JV basketball? Hey, that's why he got out and went to Harrisburg. <laughs> I played as a freshman, and Brad Lee went to Carmel. I played as a junior JV, and he went to Harrisburg. I told him... I figured Coach Reed would quit after my senior year. I thought I was running guys out of there. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hey, thanks a lot, Dan. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being with us. That's Ron Wine Miller, head coach of the Benton Rangers. We're in our last minute of the Saturday Sports Show. Thanks to all our guests today joining us. It's Scott Gamber. It was Wayne Hari, Mike McManus, Les Winkler, Jeffrey Drake, Juan Wein- Ron Wine Miller, and of course, Harrisburg head basketball coach Randy Smith Peters. We'd like to hear your answer on Facebook.com slash Sports to our social media question of the week, which is 
What sport would you like to be in charge of? We've had everything from basketball, NASCAR, golf, to curling was just posted. Follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. For Jeff Crow, who pushed the buttons this morning, I'm Danny Zerwinski. It's been another great Saturday sports show. Next week, the show goes on the road to Peoria for the Class 1A and 2A state tournaments. We'll be up there somewhere live bringing you the show. You've been listening to the Saturday sports show. NBC News starts now.